What's up, fam? I go by the name of Blessings. I'm a producer and mixing engineer in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And today, I'm answering your question. Let's get into it. Blessings did it. Now, before I do get into answer this question, I want to say thank you to the homie Al Music and to anyone else that is leaving comments, asking questions. This makes my job a lot easier, guys, because I don't want to continue to make videos that are pointless and don't help you out. All right. That's the whole purpose behind this. So thank you for that. So with that being said, we got a comment here from the homie Al Music. He commented on my analog summing versus in the box mixing. And he says the difference might be subtle, but it's still impactful. If you don't mind, how do you route your analog chain? Does each bus, vocal, drums, bass, et cetera, go to a stereo input on the summer? And he asks, goes on to ask if I can make a video. So that's what we're doing today. So if you haven't watched the analog summing versus in the box mixing, I recommend go and watch that first because this is going to basically be a continuation of that. Um, if you remember on my last video, I said that there was a learning curve, right? And this is kind of, I'm glad you asked this question on music because it kind of, this is where the learning curve comes into play per se, right? I tried various ways to figure out what works best for me. And really I've come to the determination that it determined to, for me anyways, it depends on what kind of music I'm mixing. So for example, if I'm mixing like a rock album or a rock track, I, I'm, I might use all 16 channels or I actually might some uh, make some mono and some stereo. Now, we all know um, that most of the time our low end, we want to keep in mono anyways. But for some reason, when I would mix my kick in 808, just mono through the summing channel, I felt like it, it didn't have as much punch. And maybe that's me, right? But it just didn't work out as good as I wanted it to. Now, before I take you into Pro Tools and show you exactly what I'm talking about here, I'm about to put a video here on the screen. It'll show you kind of what the LT looks like if you're not aware and also how to use it, right? It's very easy to use. But what I was talking about is you see there are 16 channels here, right? And then if you press each channel in, you'll either get a yellow light or a green light for those of you that don't know. The yellow light is for mono, the green light would be stereo, right? And then also to the right here, you'll see this drive knob. Now this is basically depending how much of the analog summon you want, how much you want that going out to your return channel. So this is the big difference between this LT and the upgrade edition. I feel like you have more control as far as pushing it a little harder. Not too sure, but that's what I, I believe is going on. With that being said, let's head into Pro Tools here and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is my summing folder. Okay, and I'll have you'll notice I have all drums, all music, all box, all effects. Now, these red channels are just master channels, right? They basically um determine how much i'm going into each one of these buses so let's say i'm going into that all drums bus and i'm hitting it a little too hard i can just turn it down here before it even goes into that bus okay just so you know what that's for all right now with these you'll notice i have l1 uh, i mean uh, line one and two line three four five six seven eight so i'm only using eight of these channels right the other eight channels um, are not being used. But what I do is I have the Apollo MK2, the very first one, the 16, okay? The black edition. It's not the first one. I think that's the second one, actually. But all the other eight channels I uh, reserve for outboard gear. I recently got a warm audio um, 273 EQ, and it's a pre as well. So I use that sometimes on drums. I use that when I'm tracking vocals, if I'm tracking vocals. But the remaining channels, just in case I want to go ahead and buy some more outward gear, I have some more channels to work with here. OK, and also, if you guys want me to do a review on that warm audio 273 EQ or also that 80 plus the, the A to D converter that I do have here from Dangerous Tubus, I'm more than happy to Dangerous Tubus, Dangerous Music. I'm more than willing to do that as well. OK, so. Back to what I was saying here. So I sum these out, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then they come back into this LT return AES, okay? From the 80 plus back into here, okay? Now, one thing I do do sometimes is let's say when I'm doing some parallel processing like on my drums, rather than sending it to the all drums bus, sometimes I'll just send that straight out to line one, two, which is reserved for my drums here, okay? So I hope that answers your question now, music, as far as how I'm actually stemming this out into 
the uh, LT. All right. And uh, definitely, if you guys have any other questions, anything like that you want me to review, let me know. Just leave that in the comments below. OK, now, if you're just getting started to mixing, this is kind of a little too advanced for you. You don't know kind of what's going on, but it's interesting. I did recently release my mini course, How Start Every Mix. The link will be in the description as well. Some free presets for you if you guys want to pick those up. Also, I'm working on some new content, some new products for you guys. But if there's something that you want from me, the next product you would like me to make, definitely leave that in the comments below as well. Like I said, I don't want to make videos and products that no one really needs or wants. That's just wasting both of our team, our, both of our time. And, and that's not what we're here for, right? So with that being said, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. Again, I go by the name of Blessings. And remember to always, always, always trust your ears. I'm out. Blessings did it.